Not one, but two rain delays Friday push back the end of the second round. And the only birdies this afternoon at PGA National would have been boarding Noah's Ark. Football season flies by faster than you know it. It's already postseason award time. Yeah, because of this investigation, Alfonso Smith is not at practice this afternoon and will not be leading the Blue Devils tomorrow in their opening round playoff game. Wanted to end tonight with a holiday poem. Twas the night before Titmus, and the Heat had a plan. Not a creature was stirring, not even Birdman. D Wade, Chris Bosch, and the gang all ready to play. Winners of six straight on Christmas Day. The Pelicans, their foe, have yet to take flight. They'll fall to 9-20 and 20 with a loss tomorrow night. Intense may be an understatement for the rivalry developing on the basketball court between Oxbridge Academy and Cardinal Newman. Sellout crowds, loud student sections. It's the norm for the three times these two have met this season. The fourth tonight, deciding whose playoff run continues and whose season comes to an end. Does it ever hurt your feelings when you put that batter's box in and then the first batter just immediately wipes away everything? Uh, sometimes. Fun fact for you, I've been to that zoo and have oh, a picture really? with my family in front of that gorilla. Front, really? But were you doing that? We were Making it charge you? Yeah, exactly. the one who ticked it off. I <laughs> would not have. <laughs> Well, the calendar has flipped and March is set for some madness. This week, the final week of the regular season for college basketball teams. And for FAU, it's a big one. Needing to win the upcoming Conference USA tournament if they want to go dancing. The road will not be easy, though. The Owls finishing up their regular season against some of conference's best. Middle Tennessee State tonight, regular season champs UAB on Saturday. But not a great start for the Owls. Blue Raiders on the run. Edward Simpson in the corner, knocking down the tray. MTSU leading by double digits for much of the first half. But the Owls bring in the claw back. Gene Tall of the Lake Worth grad answers. He had 14, cut the lead to six. Nick Rutherford would also provide a strong first half finish for the Owls. He drives the lane, splitting defenders, finishing with the reverse. FAU trailing by 12 there, but the Blue Raiders just too much. They win 76. To 59. Since the addition of Joe Johnson, the Miami Heat's offense has been firing on all cylinders. They've beaten the Bulls and Knicks, each by 18 points. In the New York game, they had one of the best shooting nights in NBA history. And the competition will only get easier over the next few days. This weekend, they face the 8-win Philadelphia 76ers twice. And tonight, it's the 15-win Phoenix Suns. A good time to play Phoenix. They've only won one of their past 15 games. Heat starting strong, as you'd expect. Luol Deng finding a cutting Dwayne Wade. D. Wade with 27 points, 7 assists on the evening. Skip ahead to the third. The former son, Goran Dragic, going to work against Fort Lauderdale native Brandon Knight. A pretty move to the basket. Heat go up by 17 and don't look back from there. Now on the fast break, Dragic to Wade. All Heat tonight, they win 108 to 92. The PGA Tour moving from the Honda Classic at PGA National to Doral this week for the WGC Cadillac Championship. Dustin Johnson in Miami after skipping the Honda last week. He won this event last year and here off to a good start. On the par 3 15th, a great tee shot. Look at that one go. Putting it a couple feet from the flag, he'd birdie. Finish the day at even par. Roy McElroy back at it after missing the cut for the second straight year at the Honda. Sinking the long birdie at 17, heading into Friday at one under par. Phil Mickelson also trying to rebound from an ugly outing just a week ago. Almost chipping it in, but just missing the edge there for Eagle. He'd have to settle for birdie on the eighth. A great day for Phil. He's one shot off the lead at five under. Scott Piercy, Marcus Frazier have a share of the lead at seven under par. A massive weekend for college basketball. We will have all the tournaments set come Sunday. And as of Sunday, we're just a week away from March Madness getting <laughs> underway. It'll be fun. It will. All when right. are we doing our brackets? Uh, two weeks from today, actually, okay. is the start you know, of, like of it all. Guess my you got to fill right. it out. You only got a short <laughs> amount of time. She's very scientific <laughs> with exactly. it. Exactly. News Channel 5. Wow, look nice at that. Story. Through the glass and everything. Yeah. Isn't that neat? Pretty neat stuff. It's always great to see when you when you make that sort of connection, right? Like yeah. meeting your heroes, yeah. spring training, <laughs> yeah. there you go. a chance oh. to meet your heroes. This is nice how we transition. You're silver nice tongue devil, you. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting, right? Everybody's back in town. Yeah. Port St. Lucie with the Mets. Roger Dean Stadium with the Cardinals good and Marlins. It's good times down here. And they get underway, the Cardinals and Marlins, tomorrow, 1 o'clock. But before that, 
they have some business to take care of. Yesterday, a college versus pro showdown between the Miami Hurricanes and Miami Marlins got spring training in South Florida officially underway. Today, the FAU baseball team, many of its players also with aspirations to one day suit up against the major league team, got a similar chance versus the St. Louis Cardinals. The 15th ranked team in the nation taking on the Redbirds in an exhibition game this afternoon. Roger Dean Stadium jam-packed full of fans from both teams. The Owls at one point up 6-1 through seven innings, but a 12-run eighth for the Cardinals finished with the score 13-6. And while the result wasn't what they were hoping for, this is an experience FAU will never forget. High school baseball. Park Vista, the top team in the area, putting its undefeated season on the line against Seminole Ridge tonight. In the third, up three zip. Chase Ashby doing his best. Benny the Jet Rodriguez scooting on home. Just like how they drew it up on the sandlot. Cobra's up four zip. They tack on another to win five nothing, improve to five and zero oh on the year. The World Leaders Conference continued today at the Palm Beach County Convention Center. Today's big guest, Ohio State head coach Urban Meyer, who spoke to a huge crowd and signed autographs for fans. But Meyer's no stranger to these parts. Last year, he and FAU head coach Charlie Partridge teamed up for a recruiting clinic, which benefited not only the former national champion Buckeyes, but the Owls program as well. And Meyer sees a future building in Boca and knows the importance of getting in on the ground floor. Recruiting never stops. Mm -hmm. Always be selling that message. Yeah, glad his stomach's feeling better as a former Gator. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you both Gators, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, you got to give it to him. He's been a big success wherever yes, he, he went. Has. He has. He's got to hand it to absolutely. him. Absolutely. Back in a moment. <laughs>. It's been 50 years since they patrolled the diamond. I think home plate's probably going to be somewhere on the end of that building. Members of the 1965 Boca High State Championship team. Boca was small. I think we only had not a whole lot of people in town. The high school was in the middle of nowhere. And all of us guys who played Little League together, Pony League together, and then in the high school. So everybody kind of, you know, knew everybody from day one when the school first opened. Five decades later, these guys are taking a trip down memory lane, putting together a reunion coming from all over the state of Florida to cheer on this group of Bobcats, looking to make history for themselves. I think it's great. 50 years later, they're doing the same thing we did way back when. You know, I hope they go all the way. And even though things have changed... 65, no, there, was, there was no I tried it, what? Yeah. No, there was no I needed five. Home ec made the hats. They put the BR on top of the hats. The winning tradition stays the same. Knowing that your, your alma mater is still playing good ball and, uh, you know, you were a part of it at the beginning. And maybe in another 50 years, the 2015 Boca High Bobcats will be reuniting themselves. Obviously, I won't be here, but uh, I think it would be great for them. At six foot six, St. Andrews junior Anthony Polite isn't tall like the Swiss Alps, but he's up there as one of the best basketball players in the country. Well, two countries to be exact. Yeah, I was born in uh, Switzerland in uh, Lugano. I've uh, lived all my life in uh, uh, Lugano. Coming from a town of just 60,000 people, Polite represented his native Switzerland at the under-16 European Championships. It was a great experience. Uh, I got to travel a lot. We went to Belgium, Bosnia. But wanting to further his pro prospect, he decided to fly over to the United States for high school and landed at St. Andrews in Boca Raton. Pretty lucky? Yeah, I'd say so. Polite says the biggest difference between the two homes is the weather, but he's no stranger to the Sunshine State. His father, Michael, played at FSU, one of the many schools Anthony is considering for college. He already had uh, three, four years old playing with that ball, so I imagine one day he would uh, obviously become a, a basketball player. But no matter where he ends up, this top teenage talent will be at home wherever there's a basketball and a hoop. Hopefully commit to, to play in college and have a good, great career there and uh, if I have a chance to go to the NBA. He could be that guy. Yeah, yeah, I could see where he can be that guy. Amian Hest for ESPN 106.3 on News Channel 5.